From my side, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear customers, and also I see some friends from the media. Um, it's a pleasure to be your host for today. Why? Because we have something to tell you. And uh, what we will tell you has something to do with the building, or let me say the setup we did here. This should be our gas station, which is no longer in use because there's no need any longer for it. And this has a story. This is the beginning of the story, and it will end with the story. So before we come now to the e counter which will be introduced by today to the US, we come and I tell you a little bit about myself, about the company, because I think not everybody is so familiar which and what we are. So you see here on this slide very easily uh, Daimler Trucks. That's uh, a company within Daimler. It's not a company, it's an organization. And you can see by the size, it's relatively huge. And in terms of revenue, it's the uh, undisputed number one in the world. But within this, there's a lot of company. And this is representing free brands. In fact, free they are. And that is Daimler Trucks Asia. And uh, I have the pleasure and the privilege to head this organization. And you can see we, we're not so small. Uh, we have brands, and Fusa is one of them. And we have also Barrett Benz, which is a very specific brand for India. So long story short, that is us. That is also me representing this port portion of uh, Daimler. And now we come to the story which we would like to tell you. We see three meta trends in the industry. The one trend is something that you can observe in the minute, in the second, and that's the urbanization. Cities are getting more and more important to the world. The second, we see more and more renewable energies. We call it clean energy. We call it positive energy. It's coming. It's coming, and there were a lot of hesitations, resistance, but now I would say it is coming. Last not least, and that we will talk a little bit more in detail, is the technological innovation and development which our industry is facing, especially the last two, three years, and it will happen also the next three to five years. So this, from our side, are the main trends which will have a major impact on the trucking and the bus industry in the near future. Let's come to the first. Organization, I think I can say the numbers speak for themselves. We see already by today or last year that more than 54% of the world global urbanization, 54% are living in cities, metropolitan areas. I just flew by, by uh, from Tokyo, 35, 36 million people, metropolitan area of New York, roughly 8 to 50 million depending how you count it. So that means very clear, cities are getting more and more important, and you see in the near future, there will be even 60% of the world population be living in cities. But when we speak about cities, we have also clear statements by more and more mayors of cities. We see a trend now. Cities are getting trend makers. They are telling what they want. It's no longer a question of nations, it's a question of cities. Cities have a voice, so they say what they want, and there is clear saying they want less pollution, less emission, and much less noise. I can say, I imagine you experience this even by today. Everything what has to do with this is now more and more confronting us to change our industry, and everything what we did for the last years is referring to that what is coming up now. We see a lot of tendencies and we see a lot of statements. You see the last statement, which was very bold from the UK and also from Paris, especially in London, that they say very clear from 2040, they will not allow any longer combustion engine driven cars and trucks getting into the cities or even be registered in the future, which is amazing because that are statements which we would have never imagined five years ago. So the statements are getting fiercer and bolder with every day to come. 
So having in mind that we will see changes driven by the cities, we have always the confrontation with there is not enough green energy. Because when you speak about electric cars or electric trucks, you're always confronted with the fact, where is the energy coming from? It makes no sense to have not a whole balance from the well to the wheel. So this is why we say, is there enough renewable energy? Is there enough energy to feed us? And this is very clear. Yes, it is. There is enough energy. How we store it is a different question, but we have enough energy. We have enough solar, we have enough wind. It's a question how we exploit it. The next question is then, okay, but is it really more energy efficient? Because it comes then to the calculation from the well to the wheel. If this is from a carbon nuclear or any power station, is then the whole balance really so positive for positive in terms of electric cars or trucks? The answer is yes. If you really calculate it through, then it's very obvious that in a real electric truck can be much more efficient in terms of energy. Not only in pollution, in emission, it can be much more energy efficient. And this is something which comes true to the people now more and more. Yes, it will not happen tomorrow, but sometime we have to start it. And we say today is the starting point. Just to give you a very, very tailored to New York example. One truck, and it would be an inner urban delivery truck, like here you see behind you. Cast, but we are all ready now. So, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the launch of the e-canter, the first all-electric truck produced in series. And um, thank you very much for coming here today. My name is Florian Laudan. Um, I'm heading corporate communications for Fuso Worldwide. And this would be combined to 160,000 tons of CO2, plus the NOx, plus the noise. This put an equation to how many trees you need to absorb it would be equivalent to 36 times of the Central Park. So you see, it's really viable. It's a balance which you can feel. It's a balance which you can touch. And this is something which can change. And New York would be one of the cities. It could be Chicago, it could be Los Angeles, it could be London, it could be Paris, Tokyo, Singapore. It's everywhere the same. So when we see the numbers, when we see the trends, what does it mean for us? When we see, is it affordable? Is it really something which makes today sense? Or shall we wait for the perfect moment? First, there is no perfect moment for the introduction of a product. If you want to change something, you have to take the risk that sometimes you're not at the perfect moment. We think today it's a good moment, not the perfect. Perfect would be the battery prices are still too high. Yes, it's a fact. But when we compare what we have seen 2010 to 2016, we see already a collapse of the prices by 75 to 80 percent. So this is what you can see on the left side. On top of that, the technology is getting better. So the energy density is getting better day by day. A lot of brains, a lot of people are working on it. And now we see the momentum. Now we see the acceleration in technology. And that's exactly where we say it's the right thing to do. Start it now. Make a use case. Make it haptic. Show it. So what does it have to do with trucks? In the last weeks, months, and also in the last year, there was a lot of talk about taxis, about sharing, about Uber, about my taxi. There was a lot of things about taxis. Taxi is a transportation of people. Yes. And in a city, you have transportation needs of people. But you have also, you have to feed the people. You need transportation of goods. And that's exactly where the trucks are coming into the game. Trucks are part of our life. Currently, some of that is annoying. Some of that is disturbing. Some of that is loud. Some of that is polluting. But it is a substantial part of our life. Trucks are there for transportation of goods. 
So if we see the truck as one of the backbone of our society, especially in cities, then the question is clear. So when all these trends come together, what does it mean for us as a truck producer? For us, it's very clear. We started in 2005 already with the first e-cell. We introduced the first hybrid. You know, when we sold now more than thousands, 4,000, 5,000 of these hybrids over the lifetime. But the hybrid is only the first step. So we said very, very clearly, when we start with the e-cell, the hybrid can be only a bridging. What we really need as a is a solution which is completely electrified. So the last two years, we accelerated massively. We had tests, tests with customers, with municipalities, with very, very exhausting tests. We tested in Lisbon, we tested in Portugal, which, by the way, was massively supporting us, and we tested in Germany. Long story short, based on this test, we feel now in the situation that we start the serial production, and I mean the serial production, of electrified trucks. It's not a prototype. It's a first small series. And that is what's coming this year. We started with a charging station in Kawasaki, our home ground. We started the production in Japan. We started the production now in Europe. And for today, we have the big event that we say, now we can touch, we can show, we can drive the truck. It's for sale. Yes. And beside that, we have a very big event, the Tokyo Motor Show in October. So that is exactly in one month and one week, where we are showing a little bit more than the e-counter. Because it's obvious, the e-counter is only the first step. But we will never limit ourselves to only one class of trucks. We have a portfolio of trucks to serve. And for this year, the highlight in the end of the year will be then the introduction of the e-counter in Berlin. So you see, we focus ourselves on the cities where we see the biggest needs for this kind of mobility. So what's the truck itself? So I will not bother you now with all the details because I'm pretty sure we have some time with each other where we can go into the details and we have also some workshops planned. But one thing's for sure, this is the first generation. It implies already there will be a second, a third, a fourth generation. Yes, it will. That's for sure. Because it's an evolutionary process. It's not terminated by now. It's just continuously going. It's dynamic. For today, we will see a truck with six battery packs. Each pack has roughly 100 cells. And the capacity of that is round about, because you can never say it so precisely, it's round about 70 5 kW. And the range for that, and also that we have to be very specific. If you have a cooling fridge on it, it is less in terms of range when you just have a platform. So the range we expect to have is 60 to 80 miles. But as it is modular, we can increase it easily to 100 miles. Then you have two battery packs on top of that. The good thing is now, and I'm very happy to say that because exactly the truck which you can see here, uh, we have Jekka and she's driving with the truck and she will come sooner or later to us and that means in the next five to ten minutes she will arrive here and I just check whether can she, she can hear me. Jekka, okay. Hi, I'm, hi, I can hear you. She can hear me but we can't see you but anyway. Um, how far are you from, from our point no, here? We are, we're not very far, but you know the New York traffic is not that easy. Uh, but the truck drives very well. It's very quiet. It's very powerful. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. I hope the traffic moves faster. But yeah, there's nothing we can do about that. So see you soon. So drive carefully. And looking forward to see you then here so that we can see and also drive the truck by ourselves. It wasn't the so, that's not enough. That's all not enough. You can say, yeah, but other people are doing the same. Yeah, eventually you're right. Not that they're serious, but a lot of people talk about it. There is one real privilege to work with Tyler. 
the privilege is that we have access to the technology of our passenger cars. We have corporations which we would eventually would not have if we would not be part of Daimler. And I would just like to highlight three of them. There are much, much more, but these three are really important for today. Because first we start with charge point. Because one of the major questions and limitations will be where do I charge the truck? And is the charge infrastructure ready to take the load? And therefore we have a corporation, a very close one, with charge point, which is in America one of the famous ones when it comes to charging places and locations. So it's an outspoken company with a drive for innovation, which we have now a very close partnership with. So that means the charging of the trucks is insured. Number two, there's a question, what happens with the batteries? It's so nice, yeah, it's, it's green, yeah? And what happens with the batteries after the first life cycle? What happens after five, six, seven, ten years, what happens? Where are you going with the batteries? And there's, we call it Mercedes-Benz Energy, and they're used for storage. They're used for storage for houses, for garage, even for charging your truck. It's AC charging, it's not DC charging. So that means the life cycle is very clearly addressed. It's understood and addressed. And the last not least is Stordot. Stordot is a very small company, but with a lot of intelligence. These guys, they work on something which is amazing. Currently, we have a problem because the charging takes too long. It takes 30 minutes, 40 minutes. It's too long. And we are aiming five minutes. So for that, we need a technology which is making the charging process faster, quicker, and less damaging to the battery so that we have more charging cycles. So Stordot is a company which, by today, there was an announcement that Daimler itself got a strategic partnership by today into this company and we have a lot of plans with this company and we're very confident that this company will be a significant part of our strategy. So, technology, trends, okay, but now we come in the end of the day always to the most important, the user, the customer. And by today we have really the pleasure to have not only one big commercial, very, very experienced, top class, global player, UPS here as our, as our strategic partner for use. We have also four non-profit organizations, which is supported by the Attorney General here of New York, where we are saying we do and we start in this city here. And we start in the city to show it's possible. We have Habitat for Humanity. We have the New York Botanical Garden. We have the Bronx Zoo, which I would love to see, by the way. And we have Big Reuse. And all of them have a business case which is very, very holistic. And that's, by the way, the same with UPS. A very holistic, end-to-end -end approach and also thought process. This makes them for us the perfect user. This makes us also the perfect partner for them. Because we are not only interested in one product to get onto the market. We want to have a certain form of change in the industry which can be led by this e -counter. And there's one thing more. Because customers, users, we need the support of the municipalities. And here in New York, we have a very, very fruitful environment because there is a plan that by 2050, the uh, emission wants to be reduced by 80%. So that's a program uh, which is uh, started, and this was started by Mr. de Blasio. And of course, in this environment, this is the very best way we can come here. So we have here the right customers, we have the right users, and we have the right political thinking which is supporting us. And that's what we need. Because if you want to change some paradigms, you need more than yourself. You need stakeholders, you need support. And that's exactly what we find here in New York. By the way, also in Tokyo, and 
it looks like very, very promising also for other cities. So to sum it up, to make it short and crisp, electrification of trucks is important for our society. Electrification of trucks, we are on it. Technical, possible. Will it be better? Yes, it will be better. It's a permanent process of improvement. Fuso itself, as a company, part of Daimler, will be the front runner in the so-called light duty segment. Will we stop with that? Not at all. We will continue. And last not least, you need a whole ecosystem with a lot of different shareholders and stakeholders. Otherwise, it will not work. But it looks like, and it is in this place here, the case that we found the ecosystem which we need to be successful with this. So, now, proof of the pudding, where's the truck? And now I have to look behind myself whether the truck is there. And that would be perfect timing if I could say that will be the truck which we'll see, and it comes. So good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, Mark. Uh, the truck drives so well. It's, um, it's great. I mean, it doesn't help with the traffic of New York, but still, it's, uh, it's quiet. It's powerful. It, you know, I had so many heads turned around when I, when I was passing by. And really, I can talk and talk about it, but I urge you to test drive it. It's the best evidence. Don't trust me. Just drive it. It's amazing. So can I drive it? Yes. Yes, only carefully. <laughs> uh, my name is Jekka Glassman. I'm the CEO and president of, of MFTA. It's a subsidy of FUSO, and I, I'm responsible for the business of FUSO in North America. Um, we are really thrilled, excited, and very, very proud to be hosting this global launch event uh, here in New York. And this is really more than just a glo uh, product launch. Uh, we believe this is a game changer which will allow us to offer our um, cleaner, quieter, more efficient delivery and distribution services to the people who live in big cities such as New York. And uh, not surprisingly, this truck has grabbed the attention of many fleet customers and uh, looking to reduce some of their uh, fuel and maintenance cost of their traditional internal combustion engines. Uh, 50 trucks will be uh, operating before the end of the year here in the U.S. And we are really pleased to have some of those customers here with us uh, today that are going to be launching, the first one to be launching these trucks here in their, uh, in their fleets. So uh, I'm very happy to uh, invite to the stage Mr. Carlton Rose from UPS. Carlton is the president of Global Fleet Maintenance and Engineering for UPS. Carlton, Thank welcome. you so much. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm proud to say UPS has a long-standing global relationship with Daimler, so of course we are happy to add the Fuso e-canter to the UPS Global Fleet. UPS's commitment to sustainability is evident by more than the 8,500 alternative fuel and advanced technology vehicles it has around the world. We applaud Fuso for offering an all-electric powertrain solution. There is no question that electric propulsion will play an important role in the future of transportation vehicles. This is a great opportunity for UPS to trial the Fuso e-canter as well as to further explore the benefits of electric trucks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you.
Thanks, Carlton. And we can't wait to uh, paint those trucks in brown UPS and just get them rolling on the roads. Um, earlier this morning, um, you heard an announcement uh, from the New York State Attorney General, Mr. Eric Schneiderman, regarding the introduction of some uh, Fuso e counter trucks in some special fleets in, in New York City. So um, throughout his E3 truck project, uh, four nonprofit organizations will be benefiting from the trucks. Uh, New York Botanical Gardens, Big Reuse, Habitat for Humanity, and the Wildlife Conservation Society. Uh, let me start by inviting to the stage uh, Mr. Mark, Ka uh, Mark Kaplovic, uh, the VP of Security and Operations in the New York Botanical Garden. Hi, welcome, Mark. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm Mark Kupkovic. I'm the Vice President of Security and Operations at the New York Botanical Garden. So we're up in the Bronx, 250-acre uh, facility. If you took a map of New York and threw a dart at it, there's a little dot up there. It's called the New York Botanical I Garden. And it's a 250-acre facility, and it's the oasis of New York. It's where people go when they need to just have a quiet moment. It's a place where people breathe fresh air. It's a place where we take very seriously uh, the plant kingdom in the world. It's a place we take very seriously the plant kingdom in New York City. We study and we do everything that we possibly can to make improvements. One of the things we do is we're very energy con uh, conscious. I uh, have participated for over 25 years in energy conservation programs. And then we had the opportunity uh, because of the, uh, uh, we're very grateful to uh, Attorney General Eric Schneiderman and to Mitsubishi Fuso Trucks for America for this opportunity to add to this wonderful uh, facility in New York for the uh, residents of New York, this vehicle to our fleet of trucks. As an institution, we're committed on uh, being on the cutting edge of energy efficiency and to reduce carbon emissions to greatest extent possible. These goals are also in line with New York City's One City Built to Last, uh, it's an initiative, once again, to reduce carbon emissions by 80% by 2050. We're extremely proud to be one of the institutions chosen to demonstrate these electric trucks, and to, we intend to use them at both the garden and on the streets of New York so people will see the important role that these innovative vehicles can play to protect our environment. Thank you very much for Thank giving us Mark. this opportunity. Thank you. Now, please welcome Mr. Justin Green, the Executive Director for Big Reels. Hi, Justin. Hi. Thank you, guys. Hi. Um, Big Reels uh, is very thankful to be part of the E3 truck uh, program for the New York uh, Attorney General's Office. Um, we pick up materials. We're a New York nonprofit focused on fighting climate change through diverting uh, waste from landfills. Um, we pick up uh, building materials throughout the city. We have two reuse centers. We, have, we also do composting, where we um, take in organics from uh, residents and New York City parks, and we give that compost away to community gardens and street tree care. And so through those two programs, we divert uh, almost 5 million pounds each year of materials from the landfills, which has an impact on climate change. One of the things we haven't done in terms of our mission has been able to uh, match our driving up, which we do a lot of, picking up materials throughout the city, with our mission to uh, fight climate change. And this, the e-canter from Fuso, will allow us to do that. So we're thrilled, after years of driving diesel trucks through the city, to finally be part of uh, the future, the future of trucking, and have electric trucks that aren't uh, emitting uh, not only climate change gases, but gases that you know, can lead to asthma and uh, uh, other health issues in the city. So we're really excited to be part of this program. We're thankful to FUSO, thanks again, and to the Attorney General's Office for involving us as uh, one of New York's leading non environmental nonprofits. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. And now, last but not least, definitely not least, Ms. Karen Haycox, the CEO of New York Habitat for Humanity. 
Thank you very much. We're so very excited to be here. Thank you very much for this meaningful gift. Um, you heard I'm Karen Haycox, and I um, have the distinct privilege of being the CEO of Habitat for Humanity right here in New York City. Uh, many of us, many of you probably think that you know what we do, which is, a fact, which is in fact, uh, we build and transform neighborhoods by providing the opportunity for simple, decent, affordable home ownership for hardworking families around the five boroughs of New York City. And part of our enterprise, a key part of our enterprise, is our Habitat Restore. Many of you may have seen it. It is in uh, Woodside, Queens on Northern Boulevard. And that is a, basically a, a resale shop that diverts uh, materials, accepts donated materials, and diverts materials from landfill, good resaleable materials from landfill. We've been operational in Queens for two years, and in that two years we have diverted 500 tons of material that would have otherwise ended up in our landfill. And we do that by driving more than 15,000 miles a year in our existing trucks. So these, uh, these trucks will definitely play a critical role in supporting our environmental footprint in, right here in New York City and in Queens. Um, I want to thank you uh, both again for this incredible event. Uh, it's so exciting for us to be right here in the heart of our city, in the heart of our hometown, um, and to, uh, to accept these wonderful gifts. So thank you for the impact that you'll make now and for years to come. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. So thank you, thank you, dear, um, dear uh, uh, guest. Um, these were some of our uh, East Coast-based customers. I'd like to acknowledge um, two additional customers that have made their way from the West Coast to be with us today. Uh, one from Southern California, this is uh, Mr. Remo Weber. He's the president of XPO Sales, and they will be taking 10 trucks to be used next to the LAX uh, airport for logistic services. And from the University of California, Irvine, uh, Mr. Saul Valdez, who is responsible for employee transportation and sustainable tr uh, transportation at the university, who will also be taking 10 trucks to be used at the university. So thank you very much both for being here today. We really appreciate that and can't wait to have the trucks delivered to you. Thank you. Um, we're coming to the Q&A session now. Um, is it on? Yeah. Okay. So um, we'll have now the opportunity to ask questions to Mr. Listosea, to Jacka Glassman, if you have, for around about 10 minutes or whatever it takes. Afterwards, we will give you the opportunity uh, to have uh, pictures taken of them, of our customers in front of the truck. And then we're wrapping this up here and leading over to the workshop session. So Q&A, um, we are getting ready for it. Mr. Listosea has taken the jacket off. That's good. So any questions? With regards to the encounter to our customers, please. Or is it too loud or was it too much information? There is one. And we have a microphone probably for you so we can all hear you. Uh, Phil Ross from IEEE Spectrum Magazine. How quiet will your car be? Do you have any numbers on that? Your truck. How quiet will the truck be? Do we have any decibel numbers? and? What are we doing about it? I think. Very good question on the decibel. I cannot answer you instantly. The only thing is what I can answer you, it's too quiet. And that brings to the fact that we need a beep tone when we are uh, close to pedestrians or in delivery, uh, especially in the evening or in the very early morning. So it is too quiet. So it is, uh, in terms of decibel, I cannot tell you whether this is uh, below 20 or so. We can measure this easily. The problem is we are too quiet. Second question over there. Anile Hussmann from Focus Magazine. I wonder about the acceleration of the truck. Is it too fast? Because like, if you're uh, standing at the red light with uh, new electric vehicles, I notice uh, they're super fast. And is that a problem for pedestrians too? It's powerful. It's great to drive. But it's not powerful in terms of you don't feel that it's you know uncontrollable. So it's very easy to uh, to control. It's very easy to drive. It's um, it's it's a great truck. On top of that, you can't feel whether you have the load or not, because it is so powerful that you have the impression you really have to look whether you are loaded. <laughs> so the payload of four and a half tons, four tons is the payload you can t carry with this one here. So you really have to check by yourself whether this is loaded or not because you don't feel the difference. 
And that is something where we have to be very, very conscious about it. So to sum it up, yes, it is quicker than an usual truck. But it's not that you can race a Porsche or something like that. It's, it's, still, it's still safe to use. Yeah. Like an acceleration number, you can get you this afterwards. I don't have it right now, but you can get you this. Hi, Danielle Moyo, Business Insider. Um, Hi, how much cargo can it carry, and does the battery limit the amount of cargo? So it's like, like uh, Mark said before, uh, it has a payload capacity of 9,000 pounds which is roughly 10% below our payload on the standard diesel truck. And that's due to the weight of the batteries, obviously. Yeah? So the very simple measure in any electric truck is the more batteries you put in, the more reach you can get, but the less you can transport, obviously. Right? And I think this is the right balance we have here. Hi, my name is Donald Dunphy. I'm with Fleet Solutions Magazine over here. OK. So uh, Fleet Solutions Magazine is part of NAFA Fleet Management Association, and we represent fleet managers. Um, so the question is, you're going to have a lot of fleet managers who are going to want to move in this direction. However, they have to make the value case to their upper management to actually go in an innovative way. Um, so I guess the question really is, is how will they be able to make that case beyond just sustainability, but for bottom line dollars and cents, which is really going to sell making that change? Yeah, definitely. So do you want to give them? <clears throat> You're full, completely right. A truck has to pay, <coughs> and it has to pay back. And uh, this is why we started now with the uh, launch, because now we can also say the truck pays back. Does it pay back in one year? No. But in a, it depends on the mileage. It depends also, you have a rough calculation that you can say with roughly 10,000 kilometers, which is equivalent to 6,000, 6,500 miles, you have 1,000 US dollars savings. Uh, so when you accelerate this by the mileage, the higher the mileage, the faster the payback. Because one thing is the current status. The, the initial pricing will be above a normal truck. But, First, this comes down over time. You have seen the technology and the innovation is driving exactly this cost in the right direction. And secondly, even today, the use case can be calculated very easily. There's one top, on, this is the classical one, but there's one on top. If you imagine you have a city entry limitation or a barrier, or you're not allowed to go into the city from 8 o'clock in the, in the evening, or from uh, not in the early morning, so you have this kind of entry barriers, then you have a totally different business case because then you have returns, you can offer services which you could not do. So it's a one or zero, it's a digital decision whether you can offer the services or not. So if this comes on top, then the payback is much shorter. The classical way, as I said, TCO, payback, the first two, but the third one is more and more coming. As the municipalities are telling very, more and more in more cities, you are not allowed to come to, for certain time slots with this kind of non-electric trucks into the urban city. And then this truck immediately pays back. Yeah. Any other open questions? There's one. Can we have the microphone, please? Good morning, uh, Thomas Jan, uh, Handelsblatt. I, I, I don't know trucks very well, so what does it mean, TCO? And uh, I did see it on your uh, this presentation. Uh, could you explain what it means and, and how, how, how the head economically counts for, for the owner? So TCO is in fact total cost of ownership. For truckers, this is what counts. So that means not the initial pricing only. Most of the trucks are financed. So you have portions like a cake. You have maintenance, you have insurance, you have driver, you have uh, the body itself, you have the depreciation of the truck. All this together is the cost which a truck is the cost to the owner. And now you can say, and how is the calculation done in this term? The thing is, every use pattern is different. 
So we cannot generalize and say, in this use pattern, it is 20, 40% better or lower. In the end of the day, you have to see the specific use pattern. And when that comes, then you can calculate very, very easily how much money will it cost you? How much, will it how much do you have to run it? And then you have immediately a balance between the income and what you have to pay for it. So it's a concept which is very known in the trucking industry. We do this since years with our conventional trucks. And um, that is something you have to do. In cars, it's less. It comes more and more. But in trucks, it's a, it's a daily life, I think. You can confirm that. It's what we have to do. Yeah, just answer the question. Anything else open? Oh, there's a question from our customers. That's also good. Uh, so w where are the batteries located? Um, we had a slide. No, I don't want to go back to the slide, uh, but you can see them here. It's just behind those things on, on both sides of the, the rig. And they're covered by, uh, by cases, of course, to, um, to, to secure them in, 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 in case of an impact. So they are well secured with, uh, with cases. Hi, Samira Hussein from the BBC. Um, how much does the truck cost? Um, and then what's the incentive for a private company to actually go with an electric car? Uh, I mean, is it tax incentives, really? Because these are expensive, difficult to maintain, uh, and you know, difficult in general for people to sort of get on board the whole green movement. No, no. you disagree, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's, it's, it's completely the opposite. They are much easier, there's much less maintenance on those trucks. Uh, the costs on, on, the, on the fuel and the rest of the, of the maintenance are really significant. Uh, the initial cost that we're coming out to the market with this truck is roughly 20%, uh, 20 to 30% over diesel. So basically the savings are, um, are just out there and the business case is almost a no-brainer. It really depends. I mean, right? Yeah. It depends. Basically, it, it depends on the on the class. Uh, right now, we have an offer that is a limited offer for the soft launch trucks. It's not a general offer because we're offering the trucks for two years lease only, knowing that the technology of the batteries mainly is going to change so rapidly in the in the upcoming years that we're going to be. Uh, a, a, leasing those trucks for two years and replacing them with the new, uh, with the new technology and uh, as expectedly with a broader uh, product line within two years from now, from 2019. So that's really important to understand. Um, the life cycle of an electric truck will mu be much different than the life cycle of a, of a combustion engine. So if you uh, imagine in, in, in former times, if you develop a combustion engine for a truck that usually had a life cycle of almost 20 years to be sold, there were some upgrades, but it's still the same engine. The electric technology is evolving so fast that we are going um, to, to the first only lease it out. We are not selling it out because the customer after two years would say, um, there's new technology available, what have I bought? So we are leasing out the truck for two years and afterwards we offer an op opportunity to get on to the new, t uh, the new model then. If that answers your question. I, I just, as a, one of the people who's going to receive the trucks as a nonprofit, like our cost of repairing diesel trucks is really high. And so maintaining them is, takes a lot more work. And these trucks with electric engines have a lot less moving parts. So it's going to be a lot simpler on maintenance. And the cost there alone um, would make it worth it to us as a, as a fleet, you know, ma a managing fleet. So that, that, that's pretty exciting. Doesn't seem con confident with the answer. Okay, I'll get back to you afterwards. Sure. Okay, I had a second question, which is, um, what is Fuso's commitment to perhaps other alternative fuels, or is it all in on electric? Are, are there any uh, plans to develop different types of vehicles with alternate fuels? Well, we do already offer hybrid since 2005, as Mr. Listosea has pointed out. Otherwise, maybe you want to give our 
our stake towards other alternative um, drivetrains. I think we focus on electric. So first, we concentrate and focus ourselves on the electric, on the battery pack. This itself is not so easy. Now it looks easy, but it's not. Now when you when you apply to the uh, fuel cell, that is something which Daimler is focusing since years. We have a development which is going on and on. So that means, and that is again a privilege to be in a big family. Because when some technology you could not afford by yourself, you have an opportunity in this family to rely on and eventually to take it. So that means Fuso is really concentrating on electrification of trucking and eventually also on buses. But that means not that we exclude all the other options. Yeah, natural gas, we have it. And we know, for example, Mercedes-Benz is very, very developed already there in this regard. And we have other options. So the good thing is, in this family, one, each part of the family has one focus. But that means we can also use it if we see it is working on the other side. We can easily adapt it to our trucks. So it keeps us open to every technology which is really outstanding in the next years to come. But we believe in the electrification. We are very, very sure and confident about it that this will be a prime path to follow, especially for the smaller trucks, especially for the inner urban delivery. When you have a mileage below 100 miles, then electrification is the name of the game. One more for focus. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, uh, for UPS, I have the question um, about um, how many trucks you will initially uh, add to your fleet and uh, how you plan to, to tank them, how, how you will fill them up with electricity. Will you have special parking places? or How, how will it work for you? Well, okay, so I'll certainly answer this question, but uh, this is a Fuso event, and, I, and I'm going to keep it as such, but I will address this one question. Um, we have an infrastructure already, and we're going to take um, ownership of three of these vehicles. And um, we haven't um, made public where we're going to place them yet. Uh, but to answer your question, we're three vehicles to start with, and then we'll just see how the trial goes, and we'll go from there. Thank you so much. Okay. If I don't <coughs> see additional questions, then... Um, uh, of course, we are still here, and um, then I would uh, ask the two of you to come over to a truck to give you the opportunity for pictures with the executive. Um, thank you very much, obviously. Thank you for you. you. Cheka, you stay with me. We still have to say a Cheka together. One. Three.